Hey guys, what is up? So in this uh, video, what I'm going to be doing is trying to build a website with Meteor.js. And um, in case you haven't heard, Meteor.js is a popular JavaScript full stack framework that's built on top of the Node engine, which is really just C and C++ code with a JavaScript API that you use to actually code in it. Um, so the benefits of using something like Meteor or, or Node in general, or any sort of web framework that uses Node, is that it's all JavaScript. So JavaScript is the language of the web, runs in the browser. You can write JavaScript code that runs in the server, and it also runs in the browser, so it uh, prevents you from having to switch between like Python or C Sharp and JavaScript. Uh, because no matter what sort of web development you do, you have to use JavaScript, you need CSS, and you need HTML. So having something like Meteor, which uses Node, is, is actually very helpful. And it's one of the reasons why I want to play with this now. So Meteor promised to be like the... Um, the best solution for modern web apps and stuff like that. It's supposed to, to replace Django and all that stuff. Uh, but none of that is really true. And you can just call and um, call it what it is, and it's just hype. Um, so React is, uh, or not React, but uh, Meteor has been around for several, several years now. Um, just recently, there was a popular article on Hacker News of what went wrong with Meteor. Uh, Meteor, uh, despite some opinion, it's not you know the the solution to solve all your problems like it was once um, advertised as, but it's still a very healthy project, and I don't think you can do any wrong with using something like Meteor, especially if you're interested in using uh, Node.js. One of the limitations you're going to find pretty quickly is that really Meteor is built for the MongoDB NoSQL database. If you're a traditional SQL guy with like MySQL or Postgres you're probably not going to want to use Meteor. At least it was that way just as of a few months ago. That may have changed, I don't know. But in this particular case, I don't actually have any sort of preference of using a SQL data database. I have no problem just using Mongo. So on GitHub here, you can see that um, Meteor is a uh, free open source project. It's MIT licensed, which makes it free to adapt and to add and to contribute to and everything. Uh, Meteor has a pretty popular uh, code base uh, and, and developers and a lot of the project itself actually did get venture capital funding quite a few times now because it did have it, it had this promise that it was going to change the way we all write code and everything and the fact that it's an all JavaScript approach and that it uses a NoSQL database by default and all this other stuff had a lot of venture capitalists very interested in the project so they put a lot of money behind it a lot of people were like well with all this money where is Meteor going to make its money back well, they try to make it under like things like this Galaxy subscription where you try to host your website with them and stuff like that. None of that interests me either. I actually host my websites with Linode. Um, but you can, you can host your websites wherever you want. I think Linode and DigitalOcean are the two best companies out there when it comes to small indie developers or small businesses where you know, they can just host a website without costing an arm and a leg. So anyway, that's pretty much enough of what Meteor is all about. And in the following videos, we're just going to go through and just try to get everything installed. And I will um, give you forewarning. I am not a Meteor expert at all. In fact, this is going to be my first go-around. But I am a programmer, and I've been doing JavaScript uh, for quite some time. And I write professional code in both C Sharp and Python. So I do have a pretty strong programming background. I'm still a noob when it comes to Meteor. And I'm not the smartest guy in the room, um, so I'll probably make mistakes along this tutorial series. But I figure this series is good for anybody that might want to try to fumble their way through the application, similar to what I would uh, would do here. And um, the end goal is that, that we're going to get something working, and, uh, and we will get there. So anyway, thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Bye.